Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website video series. This is the final technical video on the subject of hosting a website on a Raspberry Pi through your home network and we'll be looking at using the TLS certificate we obtained in the previous video to achieve a HTTPS connection for your website. Before we can do this however, we need to open port 443 on your NAT firewall on your home router so that HTTPS traffic is allowed in and out of your local network. You will need to perform a direct mapping, so external port 443 to internal port 443. I've talked about how to do this in previous videos, and I mentioned in, this, in those videos that because each router manufacturer will have a different admin interface, the specific details on how to actually configure your router to permit that mapping is going to be up to your Googling skills. But for a refresher, and if it might provide some form of inspiration for you, video five is where I talk about how I poke a hole in my firewall using my router. Now, if you follow this video course, you will have already achieved a port 80 to port 80 mapping on your router. So you just need to do the exact same thing for port 443 and you'll be able to get on with this video. So at this point, I'm going to assume you've done that and you've opened up port 443. Moving on, before we get to changing any settings on our Raspberry Pi, there's one other thing we need to do. If you remember back to the video on setting up a DNS server using Cloudflare, we set the Cloudflare configuration to not use encryption. We need to now go back to that and enable encryption so that we get the full benefit of using the Cloudflare DNS proxy service. So before we get onto the desktop, let's just show what that looks like. Okay, so I've logged into Cloudflare and I've gone to the SSL TLS screen by clicking on the fourth button from the left up here. And you can see that we've got encryption set to off. This was because I knew that we were going to be using port 80 and HTTP only to get started with our website hosting. But now that we're using HTTPS, or at least now that we're about to use HTTPS, we need to select full strict at the bottom. And that's all we need to do. With that done, we can now head over to our Raspberry Pi where we need to make some final changes and we should see all this falling into place. Okay, so we're on my desktop again, but this time we're using my development configuration. Uh, this will be a familiar layout if you've followed the earlier videos. On the left-hand side, I've got my PowerShell open. I'm going to use that window to SSH into my Pi. I'm going to use the alias we set up in an earlier video, Pi, to very quickly SSH in. There we go. And on the right hand side, I've got Visual Studio Code, which is using an SSH tunnel to access the Raspberry Pi. So the files on here are the same as what we've got on the Raspberry Pi. If you're interested in how to do that, you'll have to see an earlier video when I set up Visual Studio Code to remotely edit files on the Pi. Okay, so we've got a SSL or TLS certificate available. In the last video, we obtained that. Now we need to get that certificate into the container so that Nginx can use it. To do that, we're going to zip up the certificates and then pass them over to the container at startup using the Docker file. So first off, let's zip them up. Now you might not have the zip utility installed. So to make sure it's installed, type in sudo apt get install zip. I already have it installed, but you might not do. So this is a nice safety check to make sure you have the utility. To zip up the two folders, we're going to do the following. sudo zip minus r lib underscore let's encrypt dot zip. That's the name of the file we're going to be uh, putting the zipped content into. And then the directory we're going to zip up is slash var slash lib slash let's encrypt. I'll just use a tab to finish that off. That's the first one. That is likely to be empty, but just do it for, for safety reasons. The next one, there's a second one, um, and this is going to be in the etc directory. So I've pressed up on the keyboard to repeat the same uh, command line. And now what I'm going to do is just change lib to etc, and I'm going to change the path to just etc let's encrypt like this. Okay, so that will zip up this folder. Press enter, there we go. And you can see that's added a lot of content. So these are the two zip files that we're now going to pass into our container. To do that, we need to edit the Docker file for Nginx. 
So I'm just going to clear the screen over here because I like it neat and tidy. And I'm going to copy over, actually I'm going to move over the two zip files into the Nginx folder. So we're going to do that as follows, mv lib, and there's the file, and I'm going to move it into the website directory that we've, we've been working on so far, and that's here, that's what we're looking at in our Visual Studio Code editor. And then I'm going to go into the Nginx directory. We should see that appear here, there we go, it's appeared in the uh, Visual Studio Code editor's file system. And now we're going to do the same for the ETC version. There we go. So we have these files where we need them. Now we need to copy them into the container so that we can use them. We do that with a copy command in the doc file. So I'm just going to put a extra space between our previous three commands and what we're doing here to make it clear. I'm going to type in copy, then I'm going to copy them over. So unsurprisingly, it's going to be dot slash lib underscore let's encrypt dot zip and then the same again but it will be the etc version so to save a few seconds i'm going to copy and paste and put etc in there okay and the place we're going to copy them into is going to be the temp directory now the reason we're copying them into the temp directory is so that we can have somewhere to unzip them before we copy them over to where they need to be within the container so now that, now that we've done that we need to unzip the content we unzip the content using the unzip utility, similarly to how we zipped up the, um, the certificates previously. Now the unzip utility and the zip utility won't be available necessarily within the Docker container, so we need to install it first. So further up in the Docker file, we're going to run a run command, and we're going to do apt get update to make sure the uh, container is up to date and will install uh, the zip utility for us. We're going to use two ampersands and a backslash to drop down onto a new line to stay nice and organized. And then we're going to type in apt get installed zip minus y. We include the minus y to make sure that it won't ask us for confirmation um, because apt get install will eventually ask us if we wish to use up so much disk space and you'd have to press yes. By using the minus y flag, we can omit the need for that, which means this can be an entirely autonomous process without any human interaction. So we update the container and then we install the zip utility so that we can now unzip the two zip files we've just copied into the container. So let's do that now. So we're going to use a run command and then unzip and we're going to unzip what we've just copied in. So slash TMP slash, so we're going into the temporary directory and then etc underscore let's encrypt dot zip and we're going to extract it into the temp directory. Okay, and we're going to do that exact same thing, but for the lib version as well. So lib let's encrypt, there we go. So these two commands will mean that the uh, zip files have been extracted into the temp directory. And now we just need to move these extracted files into a more suitable location within the container. I like to keep things consistent, which means I'm going to mirror the directory structure that's on our Raspberry Pi for the certificates, which is the directory structure that was used by the certbot utility. So I'm going to run a couple of copy commands to take these extracted files and put them in those locations. So run cp, go into the temp directory, into the etc directory, and we're going to copy the entire let's encrypt folder, and we're going to copy it into the etc directory within the container. We're going to use minus r for recursive. We do it again. We'll do it again this time for the lib var version. So I'm just going to copy and paste, and then type in var lib and then same here bar lib so now it would be a good idea just to check that these this process which isn't overly complicated but it's still prone to errors and mistakes and typos is working as it should so it's easy to do that we just need to run it so i'm going to on the shell on the left navigate into the website directory and now i'm going to use the familiar docker compose up minus d to bring the containers up. And hopefully, when the Nginx service runs, it'll run this entire Docker, can, Docker file and it will install the zip uh, utility. It'll copy in 
the uh, zip files that we've got in our Nginx folder here. It'll unzip them, it'll move them into the location where they should be so that when we have a look, once this is running, we'll be able to confirm at least this much has worked and we can move on to the next section. Okay, so the containers are up. So to take a look inside a container, we're going to use docker exec minus it for interactive, followed by the name of the container, followed by bash, so that we define uh, what shell type to use. This will take us inside the container. Now, if we go to the etc directory, uh, there should be a let's encrypt directory in there if we've done our job properly. So it should be, as you can see over here, we should have copied it into the etc directory and it should be called let's encrypt. So let's go into there, let's encrypt. Excellent, ls, there we go. So if we go into live, ls, excellent. So in my case, my single hyphen entity.com certificate is in the desired location and we bought our container up without any errors. So we know it's working as it should. So I'm going to exit from this and clear my screen. So now we just have two things left to do. Firstly, we need to go to the docker-compose.yaml file and we need to make some changes to the port mapping. So under the Nginx service down here, we're currently mapping port 80 to port 80. This needs to change from 443 to 443. This means we're mapping the port 443 on the Raspberry Pi to port 443 within the Docker container. However, we must also remember to expose port 80 still so that the WordPress container can see port 80 from the Nginx container because it's port 80 that will be delivered from Nginx to WordPress. So we need to make sure this is available. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is we need to edit the Nginx configuration file, which is currently set up to listen to port 80, so normal unencrypted traffic, and pass it on to the WordPress container also on port 80. Obviously with encryption, we need it to listen to port 443 and make sure it's encrypted. So what we're going to do is change 80 to 443 SSL. Then we need to just tell Nginx where the certificate and the key is. So down here, we're going to type in SSL underscore certificate and then etc let's encrypt live single entity.com in my case, but your directory will be different. It'll be your domain and then full chain.pem. Whoops, sorry, typo, pem. End it with a semicolon. I'm going to copy and paste this line because we now need to tell it where the key is. This is the certificate file. We need to tell it where the key is. So paste, oh, excuse me, tab it over. SSL certificate key in this case. And the only difference is that instead of fullchain.pem here, we're going to have private key, spelt P-R-I-V, priv, key, dot P-E-M. And that's it. That's all we need to do. We've told the Nginx reverse proxy that we're listening now to encrypted traffic. It's on port 443, and we're telling it where to find the certificate to authenticate with, and we're done. As mentioned, this will pass it on to port 80 internally, which is exactly what we want. It doesn't matter that it's not encrypted internally. It just needs to be encrypted outside of our network. So that's it. So the only thing left to do now is to basically stop and start our containers and see if it's working. So to do this, we're just going to do docker compose down. Then we're going to use docker compose build to rebuild it. Then we're simply going to use docker compose up minus D. With all of this done, we're now able to open a browser and navigate to our website using HTTPS. So let's give that a go. So just off screen, I've typed in my domain name, being very careful to use HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash followed by my domain uh, to make sure I don't accidentally use the HTTP version. And I've got what I had previously, except that this time I have the encrypted padlock sign. So I've got my domain. I'm hosting my website on my Raspberry Pi. I'm using Cloudflare to make sure my domain is registered to my public IP address. I'm using reverse proxy in the form of Nginx, which is giving me encryption. 
I'm running all this on a Raspberry Pi, which we've streamlined to remove resources to make sure it's up to the task. And we've set up the Pi in such a way as to make our connections quicker and easier. And we've even connected Visual Studio Code to the Pi. So hopefully you found all that very useful and you're in a position where you've got your website hosted on your Raspberry Pi through your home router completely for free. If you've enjoyed this course and if you found it useful, please do like this video and please do subscribe to my course. You'll get the latest videos I produce on this kind of subject matter on Raspberry Pi coding and other kinds of coding as I produce them. It also is a nice way of showing support for the work I've done. So thank you very much and I will see you in the next part of this course which will be looking at the email server and hosting that alongside our website. So thank you for watching and I will see you there.